guys, it's Bobby from Fifth Avenue Cakes, and I thought it would be fun for the festive holidays to go into some oriental string work. So I have prepared two cakes for you. One where the strings are very round and quite large. And the other one where we're a little bit more elongated and a little bit wider. Both designs are great. It's your personal preference of what you want to do. And then I did some flower paste um, copper toned roses inside the center. I will only be showing you the, the oriental string work, so let's get to work. So I have an 8 inch cake which I've already attached to my cake board. I haven't put the border on yet because it'll get in the way of measuring. But I did go ahead and put my ribbon and everything else on. So it's a six inch round cake, and what I'm using now is, this is my sizing chart. This is where my um, beads are gonna go, and it will tell me where to put them. The most important thing is accuracy. If you're off on your measuring here, your whole cake will be off. So make sure you have this thing centered. And I'll usually put three or four pins in here because I don't want it to move around while I'm measuring. So I now have my pins that don't match one another in, and that's fine, it doesn't need to. And I have my scribing tool. You can use any scribing tool you want, or you even could use a pin. I wouldn't necessarily use um, pencil or marker at this point, because if, you, if it shows through your royal icing, or if you don't make your bead big enough, it won't look right. Plus, because I've antiqued my cake, it would be really hard to, to move it if I needed to. Okay, so we have our piece on, and this will be available in the shop. And um, it's a kit with, I believe it's 6, 8, and 10 inch, so you can make it on 6, 8, or 10 inch cake. All right, so we're going to follow the line, and we're just going to put a little mark right there and that's going to get covered up by our royal icing so I'm not concerned I want to always make sure that the line that I'm working on is directly in front of me so that I can't make an error and be off on the side you don't want to put it on the top because when you go to do your string if it's on the top it's not going to stand very well you want to gauge so that they're in the exact same spot Ooh, so they're in the exact same spot so you want your your marks to be exactly parallel to one another. So if I brought it down, I have the cake on this turntable because it's the lowest turntable I have. I'm pretty short, so I want to make sure that I'm at the exact level of the top of this cake. And I can see that this one's just a tad higher than the rest, so I'm just going to just make a smidge of a mark coming down so I know to make my bead cover that up. So I think you pretty much have the idea of how I'm marking the top. I'll finish doing that and we'll come back and mark the bottom. So now I've marked all around my cake. And I didn't mention, normally I start in the back. I started in the front um, with the first row, but I'm going to go back to starting in the back because if I'm going to be off, I'd rather it happen in the back of my cake. There's a couple of ways that you can mark the bottom of your cake. Now make sure that you keep room for your bar border. So you want to mark right about up in here. You could take a straight edge ruler, you could take a tape measure. Um, I'm going to use a metal scraper. It's about the straightest thing that I can find. So I'm going to rest it lightly on my board up against my cake. And because it has measurements right here, I'm coming in on just below the half. So I know that I'll be at the same size each time. So there's my first mark. And I'll do the same thing all the way down. You want to keep it as flush with the cake as you possibly can. 
and I would definitely whatever you use for your straight edge if you have like I said something that has measuring units on it it's a little bit better because that way you know that your little dot your little holes that we're making are going to be the same height and that will make a huge difference when you go to pipe in your beads and do your string work so I will continue I'll do one more just to give you the gist of it And then sometimes I'll go back and check it again after I get them all in just to make sure that I'm perfectly in line. So you can see this dot and this dot corresponds with one another. So I'll finish doing this and I'll see you in a minute. So we're going, I like to start with the upside down part. So we're going to start with that first. This is a four inch round, I think it's four inches high too. Four inch round high and round, four inch round and high um, cake dummy. I'm going to gently turn my cake over and I'll do it a little bit more gracefully when we have um, the strings on there. So we're going to start with the upside down part first because that's always the part that gets everybody nervous. You can start with the top or the bottom. I'm going to start with the bottom first just because it's the most cumbersome. So I have my cake upside down on a four inch round, four inch high dummy cake. I'm working with a zero tip and a parchment bag. I prefer to work with the parchment bag. It gives me more control. So we're going to make our string come out. Well, we're going to help he attaches first. We're going to start pressure, get that string to attach nice. Pull out. Don't bring your tip down, allow gravity to do it for you and release pressure and attach it to the other side. And you're going to do two of those. And this one's going to be a little bit shorter. And the exact same way that you did it before. I'm going to fix this string right here. So exactly what I did here, I'm going to be doing on the bottom, or on the top actually. Now it's very important that each time you go, we're going to skip the bead. We went with the bead that is not that was not piped over. That they match in length. And I think this one's just a tad too high, so I'm going to take that off very gently. With my dampened brush. And do it again. So I'm going to start on my bead, bring my piping, my royal icing out, release pressure as I come to the other bead. Make our second string. Now I'm watching my royal icing, but at the same time I'm looking over to see that it matches the other side. Release pressure. Now I have my cake turntable or my cake table turned. If you don't have a turning cake table, sometimes you can pull your string out with a brush and hold it for a second or you can make your bead come out even larger. So all we're doing really is string work. We're just developing a fluidity, making sure that the royal icing is not touching the cake You're going to release your pressure as you come over to your other bead. Now I'm piping to the side of me, which is a little bit unusual. But I want you to be able to see this. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing 
on the top of the cake, I almost called it the bottom because we're hanging upside down, that we did on the bottom of the cake. And now you can see why you wouldn't want to, this might give me a little trouble, why you wouldn't want to put your cake board on after doing this. So we're doing the exact same thing. We're going to build up our pressure as we put it on the bead. Make sure your icing doesn't curl on you. Bring it out. Let gravity do its job. Start releasing your pressure and come over to the other bead and lay it down nice. You want the length to be about what it is on the top. Get it as close as you possibly can. And this is where you don't want that length to be too high. So we're just building up our pressure on one bead bringing our icing out and if I didn't tell you before we are working with soft consistency we're icing so that means you want it to fold over like an ice cream scoop when you're paddling it Release your pressure and come over to the other bead. I'm not too heavy with the way that one looks. I'm going to see if I can quickly with my damp brush just gently just nudge it. No. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. So I'll take it off. I've got a little build up on this bead that I don't want. There we go. I'm using my finger underneath the bag just to guide it and keep the tip straight. But I'm not adding any pressure with my left hand. I'm working left to right because I'm right handed. If you were left handed then obviously you'd work right to left. And everything else that we're doing would be exactly the same. Now you can hold it here a few minutes if you want and let the string, because it is a, a zero and it's such a small tip, the string can die in, dry, not die, hmm, that'd be horrible, dry in the air. We don't want any dying string work, that would be barely bad, nobody dies. But if you keep it and hold it for just a second, it will dry a little bit in the air for you. So we're going to go in here and take this off without hitting the other string. I'm working with a smaller brush and the brushes that I am working with, my artist brushes, are only used for royal icing. I never use them with petal dust or with fondant. They're always used for royal icing. That way I know they're grease free and dust free. Alright, so while I was waiting a few minutes for my royal icing strings to dry, I beat, beat up some new fresh royal icing. And we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to make these strings a tad shorter that we did before. And I forgot to mention when you're making your connection, when you're starting your connection, not ending your connection, when you're starting your connection, you want to make sure you have a nice buildup. Not so much, obviously, that you're bulky, but that you have a really good connection because if it's a weak string, it will break. So, ooh, and see, we're curling there, so I'm going to take that off. Clean up that bead and my finger. 
but if you have a weak string and you go ahead and decide to use it, you're going to find that later on when you overpipe another string, you're giving that string a stress fracture and it will probably break. And it is almost impossible if your back strings break to go back in and fix them because then you're dealing with physics and you're trying to get behind and under, underneath with your nozzle. It's always a shame to have to start over because every string broke. So the exact same thing as before, you want to start with a nice buildup pressure, bring your string out, stretch it nice, don't need to dip your tip. You're going to let gravity do that for you. Now your string will be laying on your other string just barely. I should say it's touching, not laying. You don't want it To have many wrinkles. So if it looks like it's actually dragging on that string, you might want to take it off. While your royal lacing is nice and moist, it's quite easy to use your damp brush to take off any problems that you have. Alright, so now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom row. So we're going to start right here. We're going to make a connection on our bead. And these are the beads that we doubled up on. Releasing our pressure as we come over to the second bead. making our second line a little bit shorter. So now we're starting to weave in and out. It's really important that you make a good connection with that first bead. And you have a nice buildup. As I was saying, you don't want to have any stress factors in your royal icing. And if you're watching your icing, you can see if it seems thinner in one area than another. Forget to start releasing your pressure as you get to the other bead. I'm going to clean just the back of this up because it's a little bit of a nice and build up right there. Keep your dampened brush right by you. Make sure my tip isn't having some problems and it isn't. If you find that your icing starts breaking a lot and you know that your bag is nice and tight and the icing's down in your tip and you're putting the same amount of pressure on, you might need to go rebeat your icing. 
push my icing down and make sure that it's got a nice tight bag happening before I decide to repeat. And there we Now I like to pull my icing out and what I mean by that is I'll make my connection and I'll just pull it straight out with, oh that was a bad example, no wasn't it? I'll pull it straight out so I get a nice straight line with my braille icing. Every once in a while, you're going to want to check and make sure that you have they're the same length as the preceding string. All right, so we're going to turn our cake over. We're going to grab a hold of our cake dummy and just flip it upside down. I'm going to get rid of that as fast as I can and then nicely put it down. Actually I need to turn my cake table I just realized. I'm going to do that real quick. There we go. Get it positioned and clean it off a little bit. And come back in. Now that we're flipped and we know the cake is fine, I want to show you the parchment comb. This is the size I'm working with. So when I say um, small, this is the size I'm talking about. And you want to fill it about halfway, so that would be right about there. And that's about the size of my the palm of my hand. I just wanted to show you that. All right, so now we're going to do the bottom part. And we're going to start again with the beads that are not um, as pronounced. So I want to make sure that I am on the right beads. I'm going to take a careful look, and these are done. Also, I can see that the row lacing is behind. And just like before, we're going to start with pressure. We're going to pull out. We're going to start with pressure. We're going to pull out. We're not going to allow that tip to dip down. We want it to be about the same height going down as it is long. And once I believe it's about that size, I will connect it with the bead and release my pressure. So I'm going to take a look and make sure we're about the right size. And it looks like we are. And then we're going to do a double one. So exactly what we did on top, we're going to do on the bottom. Releasing my pressure and coming down. Be careful not to hit any of the preceding strings with your nozzle. So my tip did have a little clog in it, and I went ahead and got that out. And I realized it had a little clog in it by the way the icing was coming out. It's not giving me any trouble now. That I made that too long. I got a little overzealous. So once you get to the length you want, you want to completely release your pressure and gently put it on your bead. So 
start your second one. It's going to be a little bit shorter. Ease your pressure on your bead. Now I started upside down. You could have started right side up. I prefer to start upside down for me. It just gets that out of the way. But it doesn't matter which way you start as long as you do both your beads, your alternating beads and your regular beads. Now we will not be making a looped row like this on the bottom. This is only for the top. I suppose if you wanted to, you could try. I think it would get in the way. Okay, so now that we have our first set of fully circled oriental string work, we're going to go to the alternating. I'm calling them double beads, where we had to add in another bead on top so we could let it lay out. And you're going to start the same way. Remember, this is going to be shorter. You'll release your pressure as you come across. You do your double string and release your pressure as you come across, ending on the lead. I just want to clean that bead up in there. Start on the bead, get your length, release your pressure, and release your string. Come in the inside. And do the exact same thing. Be careful not to bump your string work that you've done. And when I say start on the bead, I'm actually not wanting you to touch any of the strings with your tip. I'm going to move that string over before he dries. or I'll redo it. I want you just to make sure that you make a connection on that bead. If you actually try and lay the tip on your bead, you're going to bump a string and it's going to break. So I've mixed up a color that will match my cake and that's going to be our third row and we're going to go from each bead to each bead. I've gone ahead and put the beads on and they're dry and this will be our shortest bead. So I'm just going to go from bead to bead. You're doing the same thing, you're just letting gravity do its job. And I'm sure that it's hard to see that this is a color, 
but it's um, a mixture of four different petal dust with a little bit of bronze luster dust added in there. So we're going to do the exact same thing on the top of the cake that we just did on the bottom and then we'll be flipping it upside down. Now this part is probably your quickest part because you're just going from one bead to the other. Sometimes depending on the petal dust that you choose the icing might have problems. This one is doing just fine. And this is Squire's Bronze, which is always a, a lovely color to use for anything. So now we're just doing the bottom part of our oriental string work. These will be our final loops. <laughs> 